Live from the Caterpillar Global Communications Center at Bradley University, this is BU TV News. Good evening and welcome to BU TV News. I'm Sharon Hertig. I'm Joey Wright. Let's take a look at the news. Say hello to one more week of winter break and say goodbye to spring break for 2021. A schedule for the 2021 spring semester was released in an announcement from Bradley's Office of the Provost. Spring semester will begin on Wednesday, January 27th, a week later than usual. The Provost Office said that this extra time will allow students and employees time to quarantine after any travel taken during the holiday season. The office said eliminating spring break will reduce potential spread. Since last Friday, only two positive cases of COVID-19 have been reported on Bradley's campus. According to Bradley's COVID-19 dashboard, 43 students are currently quarantining or in isolation. Since the beginning of the semester, over 2,000 tests have been administered through Bradley. In a press release on Tuesday, the university announced the hiring of Tom Hammerton as the Vice President for Advancement. Hammerton will be responsible for the institution's fundraising and alumni engagement initiatives. He previously served on Bradley's advancement team from 1999 to 2008 before joining OSF Healthcare, where he was the president of the OSF Healthcare Foundation in 2013. He will begin his new position at Bradley on December 1st. Monday night, ACBU hosted Black Lives Matter with musician and poet Ovius. The stream of the event started at 7 p.m. Students joined the watch party on Olin Quad or tuned directly to the stream on Zoom. At the watch party, ACBU set up a table for students to check in and grab a Capri Sun to enjoy while watching. In the poems Ovius recited, he touched on topics such as the upcoming election and mental health. The main theme of the showcase was Black Lives Matter. Ovius dedicated a poem he wrote to women of color titled Black Orchid. Between poems, he told the audience to think independently and to end the night read a letter he wrote to his heroes. It is Mental Health Awareness Week, and this year the Active Minds organization is passing out encouragement to the residents of Lutheran Hillside Village, a local senior living facility. Due to COVID-19, residents at Lutheran Hillside have been unable to welcome visitors on site. In an effort to help raise the spirits, the residents, uh, pardon me, in an effort to help raise the spirits of the residents, Bradley students will write letters or motivational statements and deliver them to the residents. Students wishing to participate can drop notes off outside the Olin Quad from 1 p.m. till 2 p.m. this Friday, October 16th. Coming up next, we have weather. And then entertainment gives us three horror film favorites. Later, our producer Anthony Landall sits down with the president of the American Sign Language Club. Stay tuned. You're looking at me in the future, okay. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls. Oh yeah. Do you remember, it was this girl that I was getting bullied by that one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me because like I finally like knew that I had somebody. Because of you Isaac and what you did for me years ago, I grew up to be more independent and love myself and just be a little bit more confident. Aww. <laughs> I'm like a little tearing up right now. Just to see her in the future, just to blossom and look beautiful, and that was really amazing. Touchdown! Oh, oh. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored, we're going to playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What, I should take your phone away? No, 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 I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. Kevin, I need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it.
So today we had a nice warm temperature of 80 degrees and um, unfortunately this might be one of the last weeks that we see that kind of weather. Going to Peoria's radar, um, Peoria doesn't have a whole lot going on but we do have some wind chill and it is getting cooler now. Um, we do see near Wisconsin and Michigan that there is a lot of precipitation. Um, hopefully we don't get a lot of that. Um, going into the temperature map, it is warm right now if you can see it. Um, it's about like 70 degrees uh, and it's pretty warm. Okay, there we go, finally got that. It is about 70 degrees uh, and again, this might be one of the last times, so take advantage of this, go out, study, get some time out, because in a few weeks you won't be able to leave your house without being bundled up in about like 1,700 layers. Um, going to the five day forecast, um, yeah. so we do have chillier temperatures right now. Uh, we do have a nice, um, Saturday coming up with 64 degrees. Again, I will warn you to take a jacket layer up because the wind chill will be high. We are getting some precipitation towards the very end. So again, dress um, appropriately. Um, other than that, that's all I have for you guys for now. Have a chill weekend and over to Mark for entertainment. Thank you very much, Tears Up. Benedict Cumberbatch is confirmed to return as the Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange for Spider-Man 3. He will most likely be filling the mentor role to Tom Holland's Peter Parker that was previously held by Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark and Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury. This move will give the film some more star power and set Holland alongside another seasoned actor. Having Doctor Strange back could explain some of the other casting choices, as Jamie Foxx is also confirmed to reprise his role as Electro, last seen opposite Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in 2014's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Cumberbatch is set to begin production on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which could explain this crossing of alternate realities. Spider-Man 3 will start shooting in Atlanta later this month, and Multiverse will begin filming later this year in London. The grand finals of the Overwatch League took place in Korea last weekend with last year's champions, the San Francisco Shock, defending their title with a 4-2 rout of the Seoul Dynasty. Due to COVID restrictions still in place in Korea, the matches took place virtually, with production and commentary done off-site. The, the MVP of the 2020 season was also revealed to be Byung-sung Fleta Kim of the Shanghai Dragons. And Overwatch's annual Fright Fest, the Halloween terror event, also launched on Tuesday with brand new exclusive legendary skins for Genji, Hanzo, Winston, Sigma, and D.Va. Junkenstein's Revenge, the fan-favorite arcade mode, will also return with a slew of new challenges for returning and new players alike. It wouldn't be an entertainment report during the month of October if I didn't mention some good old-fashioned horror movies. Pay no mind to the horror movie happening in the real world and turn into your screens for my top three best horror movies to scream to this month. Number three is Hush, a suspenseful thriller about a deaf writer being stalked in silence by a killer in a secluded cabin. Number two is Get Out, a wonderfully creepy film from Jordan Peele that will leave you shaken until the credits roll. And number one, one of my all-time favorite horror movies is Train to Busan, a Korean zombie film about a man and his daughter trying to survive a deadly outbreak. You much of a horror movie person, Tirza? Not that much, but I'm definitely going to watch the ones you suggested, for sure. <laughs> Make sure to keep the lights on, because they do get a little creepy towards the end. I'm scared. <laughs> but anyways, coming up next, we have another Morgan's Mindful Minute. And later, sports will have the schedule for men's and women's basketball. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers 
while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Part-time job, full-time hustle, all-time Shiro to all of us. You nurture, we listen. You teach, we thrive. You lift our spirits, but we've got to lay down the truth. It's time for you, our Shiro, to stretch for the stars. A free online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Start saving more for retirement so you can feel prepared and live your life to the fullest. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today our producer Anthony Landall sat down with the president of Bradley's American Sign Language Club to find out the challenges of communicating and learning sign language over Zoom. Joining us today is Caitlin Berger, president of the American Sign Language Club here at Bradley, a music and entertainment junior. Caitlin, welcome to the show. We're happy to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. So the one thing I wanted to talk to you about today was dealing with uh, virtual meetings with your club. Specifically, it's a club where individuals have to communicate through hand uh, signals. And what's the challenges with that over Zoom? Yeah, so it's definitely different. Um, some of the signs that we do um, at our meeting, it takes up the whole body, um, the whole torso. So the sign for welcome in sign language um, is kind of like a side C on your torso um, and definitely that's some challenge. Um, there's also a delay in our meetings. Um, like if I'm signing, hello, you can see there's a little bit of a delay in the video um, sending over. Um, but meeting virtually is definitely, um, it has its perks and as well as its um, negative sides to it because we can do breakout rooms, so have smaller, um, versus when we are in person, we usually get full-size group meetings and we wouldn't break off into the smaller groups. And I'm guessing in the case of like you just did, I saw your hand kind of wave and it was pretty fuzzy. Do you ever get confused when someone tries to make a sign and then you interpret it in a different way? Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of signs that are um, very similar to um, that are very closely related. The sign for blue is you wave a B versus um, like breakfast. Um, and so in brown, everything. Um, so knowing the motion and having it slow enough, uh, interpreting that on camera helping other people is definitely hard. Um, we had a Girl Scout event where we taught Girl Scouts and that was virtual when usually it's in person. Um, and that was really difficult because usually younger kids, you have to help them with their hands. They, um, they don't always know how to move um, their fingers in the proper way. Um, and so trying to see where they could improve um, was definitely a challenge. Now, I know you have regular meetings um, here at Bradley in addition to those events. Uh, if a student was interested in joining or wanted to uh, come in on a meeting, what would that meeting look like? How do you kind of introduce someone new to the, to the organization? Yeah, so this week um, we are going to learn kitchen vocabulary words um, and do kind of conversation, asking questions about what are you cooking or when are you going to go eat. The next week we have food vocabulary, which is all kinds of food from hamburger um, to fruit and vegetables. Um, so that's really fun, definitely useful um, when you're in the kitchen or just when you want to go out to eat with friends. Then the last question I have for you today is, you know, dealing with COVID-19 and the pandemic and communicating health uh, messages and warnings and new ordinances to people who maybe struggle with talking or hearing. How have you seen that affect that community and, and, and what's going on from that perspective? Do you know? Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, during the COVID, when it was major over the summer, there was definitely interpreters um, who were becoming more known um, and bringing that about. Um, but at the presidential debate, there wasn't an interpreter. Um, and so there's kind of some talk about why wasn't there. There should be. Um, and the FCC, I believe, does not require TV stations to have that. Um, required and so but I mean the iPhone uh, FaceTime now has this new update where if somebody's signing on FaceTime it'll zoom into your face. Well that's all the time we have today thank you for coming on today Caitlin. 
Thank you so much for having me. All right, great. Back to you in the studio. Thank you for that, Anthony. Great insight from Caitlin as well. We now go over to Morgan's Mindful Minute with some suggestions that'll take you outdoors. Hey, Bradley people. It's Morgan from BOTV News, and today I would like to talk about the importance of being outdoors and the essential health benefits of taking nature walks. Now, with winter just around the corner, it has been exceptionally warm out, and it's been great to witness the beautiful changing of the leaves. But some health benefits you may not know about being outside are that nature walks promote and improve your short-term memory, nature lowers stress levels and boosts your focus, and even helps fighting with depression and anxiety. There are multiple studies that show how nature walks help restore your concentration and boost your overall mood and self-esteem. As Bradley students, I think we are very fortunate to be living next door to Laura Bradley Park, which provides beautiful scenery, a place for frisbee disc golf, and an outlet for talking and walking with your friends and mindful meditation. Another positive amenity we have living in the Midwest and in Peoria is that there are many places to go on nature walks. Feel free to look up some places that include Detweiler Park, Grand Avenue Lookout Point, and Glen Oak Park. Whenever I'm feeling stressed, I try to make time in my everyday routine to go for a walk outside for at least 20 minutes, and I find it very helpful. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or suggestions on more cool places in the Peoria area to take nature walks, let us know in the comments below. I'm Morgan from Morgan's Mindful Minute. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay mindful. Be one with nature. Have a great week. As always, thank you, Morgan. Up next, Jonathan has your sports for the week. And later, we have a few campus announcements followed by a musical performance. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. There it is. Go on with it. Leo! They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Bring it. Catch you guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. Welcome back, I'm Jonathan Michael with this week's sports. The NFL is in full swing five weeks through the regular season with enough content and analysis to satisfy any sports fan, but it's 2020. The NFL scrambled to realign schedules after 18 players and staff members tested positive last week for COVID-19. The Tennessee Titans were among the hardest hit playing their game against the Bills on Tuesday night, and their week six game was moved to next Monday. Four other teams had their bye weeks moved, causing a reshuffling of eight different games. The Steelers will have to play 13 straight weeks without bye as a result. Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger was among those to voice concerns about the changes. He said, quote, we got the short end of the stick. New protocols have players tested daily to identify and limit spread as early as possible. If any team violates protocols, they risk penalties as harsh as losing a draft pick. The Bradley Braves men's and women's basketball teams will be taking the floor sooner than you would 
The season is expected to start in six weeks. With the ongoing pandemic, much uncertainty clouds the preseason preview, but official predictions are starting to roll in. The Missouri Valley Conference announced their official women's preseason poll on Tuesday. Bradley's senior Gabby Hawk and junior Laisha Petrie were selected to the all-conference team to rep the Braves. Petrie nabbed preseason player of the year, and Bradley was picked to finish second in the conference behind Missouri State. The highest preseason mark in team history. The Braves have improved their win total every year since coach Andrea Gorski took over in 2016, and this year they look to improve their 22-7 campaign from the 2019 season. On the men's side, the official preseason poll release is on Thursday, but Blue Ribbon College Basketball Yearbook released their Missouri Valley Conference preseason picks on Monday. The Braves are slotted third behind Loyola Chicago and Northern Iowa, respectively. The UNI Panthers welcome back sharpshooter A.J. Green to avenge an early exit in last year's MVC tournament. The Panthers also add Gatorade Player of the Year Bowen Bourne to the mix. The Ramblers of Loyola returned Cooper Caves back from injury along with Cameron Crutwig, and Loyola looks to continue one of their most successful runs in decades. Bradley may be overlooked in the eyes of the experts this year. But senior Elijah Childs earned Blue Ribbon All-Conference Honors and junior guard Terry Nolan Jr. was named MVC Newcomer of the Year. That pair joins quite possibly the deepest roster Bradley has seen in years, with six returning scholarship players, five freshmen, and three transfers not eligible. A Bradley game many will be looking forward to down the stretch is a clash with Drake in their penultimate home game of the season. The Braves and Bulldogs always seem to have hotly contested matchups, and last year's conference tournament game was no different. Let's take a look at those highlights. Here's Daryl Brown uh, scoring a layup to put the Braves up 44-35 at the half, but Roman Penn with the and one to, to give the Bulldogs some life. Drake fans are loving that. Drake making a comeback, and guess who? Roman Penn again, but as Nick Cannell to end the Bradley drought in the second half, scoring a signature off the dribble jumper. And then right here, Sudanese Thunder, Koch Bar, throwing the slam down to electrify the Scott Trade Center, and the Braves would not look back as they take the game 76-66. to Up next, Sheridan and Joey return with some campus announcements We'll be right back. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Roll over. Can't five five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... Her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Take a look at a few campus, campus announcements this week. 
Applications for two different ACBU positions have opened up this week and will close on Monday, October 18th. The event coordinators plan and manage several events throughout the year, either individually or with a team of other coordinators. Marketing coordinators are responsible for promoting and advertising events and managing the organization's social media and websites. The application can be found on ACBU's website at acbu.org. The Virtual Graduate and Professional School Fair is being held on Wednesday, October 28th. This fair is an opportunity for sophomores, juniors, and seniors of all majors to learn about graduate school and meet with representatives from over 100 different programs. More information can be found on the Smith Career Center's website. On Tuesday, October 20th, ACBU is holding a cash cab event. Coordinators will be driving around campus in a golf, court, golf cart, picking up students to participate in the event. Groups of one to two students can hop in and answer trivia questions to win prizes. To participate, you either sign up in advance or stop by the Lydia statue between 12.30 and 7.30 p.m. The sign up can be found in the Hilltop Happenings email. I guess we better prepare for some trivia, right? Sign me up, man. My <laughs> friends and I, we could crush that. We could win some money. Oh, I yeah? Think. Well, I'll be right there behind you. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that is it for Butte TV News this week. I'm Sheridan Hertig. And I'm Joey Wright. We leave you tonight with a performance from Kiana Baylor. Have a great night and stay safe. If you were